Today's lesson is on absolute value inequalities, and we're going to see how absolute value inequalities relate to compound inequalities. Before we start, I want to look at two basic absolute value inequalities, and let's think about what their graph would look like. This first one, absolute value of x is less than 2. So let's think about what values of x make this true. Well first, we need numbers that are less than 2, because 3 wouldn't work. So let's put a circle at 2, and we want to look at numbers less than 2. However, what happens if you plug in negative 3? The absolute value of negative 3 is that less than 2. Let's see, this becomes a positive 3, and 3, that's not less than 2, so that doesn't work. So anything below negative 2 doesn't work. So we have to go this way. And it ends up being all numbers in between negative 2 and 2. So values of x have to be in between negative 2 and positive 2. So this absolute value inequality turns into an and compound inequality. All right, let's look at the next one. This time we have absolute value of x is greater than 2. So let's think about what values of x make this inequality true. Well first, obviously numbers greater than 2 are going to work. Um, but let's see, what happens when we plug in 0? Absolute value of 0 greater than 2, that doesn't work. What if we plug in negative 1? Absolute value of negative 1, is that greater than 2? That one doesn't work. But what if we plug in something like absolute value of negative 3? Is that greater than 2? Absolute value of negative 3 is 3, and 3 is greater than 2. This time it works. So all numbers that are less than negative 2, because you take the absolute value of them, and they're positive, and therefore bigger than 2. So this time, if we shade opposite directions, this creates an OR statement, where x is greater than 2, or x is less than negative 2. Alright, so let's look at how absolute value inequalities change when you have less than versus greater than. When we had absolute value of x is less than 2, it turned into an AND statement like this, and when we had greater than, it turned into an OR statement like this. So, to help me remember, this is what I always say. I always say less than and greater because that helps me remember that when you have a less than sign, it turns into an and statement, less than, and when you have a greater sign, it turns into a greater, an or statement. So and versus or, absolute value turns into compound inequalities. So here is our first example. We have an absolute value with a less than inequality. So if it's less than, I want to think less, less than, I want to create an and inequality. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take whatever is inside the absolute value, 3x minus 5. It is less than or equal to 8, but greater than or equal to its opposite, negative 8. And now we can solve this just like an and compound inequality. So I have to add 5 to all sides, so 3x 
is in between negative 3 and 13. And then I have to divide all sides by 3. So x is in between negative 1 and 13 thirds. Here's my second example. We once again have a less than sign. So less than, we create an and statement. Whatever's inside the absolute value, 2 minus x comes down. And we create an and compound inequality where it's in between 4 and then it's opposite, negative 4. And now we have to solve this like an and compound inequality. So I need to subtract 2 on all sides, which leaves me with a negative x in the middle. So less than 2, and then here negative 6. Now I'm dividing all sides by negative 1. And because I divided by a negative, we have to flip the sign. So I have positive 6 greater than x, which is greater than negative 2. But now we have to do a double flip because we have to flip the whole thing to write it in proper form. Negative 2 is less than x, which is less than 6. So there you go. Okay, this one, quite a bit more complicated. When you first look at it, we have a greater than inequality. However, if you look here, this absolute value is not isolated by itself. It has to be isolated before you can create a compound inequality. So before we do anything, we have to get this absolute value by itself. So I'm going to start by subtracting 4 on both sides of my inequality, which leaves me with negative 3 times the absolute value of m plus 2 greater than negative 18. It's still not isolated because of the negative 3 out in front. So I want to divide both sides by negative 3 to cancel out here. Divide by negative 3. But notice what we just did, divided by a negative. So I'm left with the absolute value of m plus 2. Switch the sign so it's less than a positive 6. So now we have a less than, therefore less than, create an and statement. So that means that m plus 2 is in between 6 and its opposite, negative 6. So now we just have to subtract 2 on all sides. That will leave me with negative 8 is less than m, which is less than 4. So there is my final solution to the top inequality. All right, here's our next example. And this time we have a greater than inequality. So greater we want to create an OR statement. So one of them, you're basically going to rewrite what's given to you without the absolute value. W plus 2 greater than 5. And we'll solve that. Or, what you have to do on the other one, W plus 2, we have to change both of these. It's now change the second part to a less than inequality. And then instead of 5, we want to look at its opposite, negative 5. So if we subtract 2 on both of these, we are left with w is greater than 3, or w is less than negative 7. So on a graph, it would look like we have 3 we have negative 7, greater than 3, less than negative 7. In this example, once again have a greater than inequality, but notice how 
this absolute value is not by itself on one side of the inequality. So our first step is we need to add 3 to the other side before we can create a compound inequality. So absolute value of n is greater than 10. And then, because we still have a greater than inequality, we need to create an OR statement. And one of them, you just rewrite as is without the absolute value, n is greater than 10. And then your other one, we have to switch these up. So n is, instead of greater than, less than, and instead of positive 10, negative 10. All right, here's our last one. We have greater than or equal to, however, the absolute value is not isolated because we have the five and the two. So to isolate it, let's first subtract five on both sides. So I have two times the absolute value, m plus three is greater than or equal to 5, and now I have to divide both sides by 2, so I am left with the absolute value of m plus 3 is greater than or equal to 5 halves. And I still never had to flip my sign, so I still have a greater than inequality, so I need to create an OR statement. So first, let's rewrite this without the absolute value, m plus 3, greater than or equal to 5 halves, or now we have m plus 3, change both of these, less than or equal to negative 5 halves. So let's subtract 3. and we will get m is greater than or equal to, and here m is less than or equal to. And 5 halves minus 3 is negative 1 half, so m is greater than or equal to negative 1 half, or if we have negative 5 halves, and we subtract 3, we get negative 5.5, which is the same thing as negative 11 halves. So this whole thing is my final answer. So there's your full lesson on absolute value inequalities and how they change into compound inequalities. So good luck with the lesson.